I want to start with a, a, a quote from Russian playwright Anton Chekhov, or at least you know, the web says he said it, uh, which is that um, any fool can survive a crisis. It's day-to-day -day living that wears you out. And what this is all about is helping family caregivers with day-to-day -day survival um, amongst all the chaos. Um, most of the time when people talk about caregiving, it's sort of stereotypically uh, some 50-year-old woman taking care of her 80-year-old parents, and it's really helping her with the meds and the blood pressure and all the interactions with doctors and so forth. That perspective is not most of caregiving. And what most of caregiving is about is this endless stream of mundane tasks. Yes, you gotta remember the Lipitor, but far more important is everything else you're doing to help people just live their lives enjoyably. Companionship is absolutely perhaps the most important thing on, on that list. But it's the chores, it's the dusting, it's the making the food, it's getting them out of bed, to the chair, whatever else. Uh, it includes you know, remembering the flea medicine for your cat. Caregiving involves a really wide variety of tasks. Each one seems trivial, but you try to do this for you know, 20 hours a week, 50 hours a, a, a week for years on end, it's overwhelming. The other key thing is it's not just 50-year-old Sue taking care of 80-year-old Mary. People are involved in small family networks. So think of it as a micro-social network. You know, it used to be called a family. Um, people are helping each other. <laughs> So sometimes Sue is helping Mary a lot, but sometimes she goes away and Fran steps in or Bill steps in. And in the meantime, Mary is not just some frail person sitting in a corner being served. She might be taking care of Jeff and so forth. People are involved in each other's lives. In fact, uh, in Australia, which uh, George and friends kindly invited me out to, I was really pleased to learn the word carer. It seems so much more appropriate than caregiver, which implies this unidirectional thing. But so the reality of caregiving, since that's the word we use in America, is that it happens in social networks. It's bi-directional. It's multi-directional. And so Unfrazzle is designed to help families remember and keep track of that infinite variety of their daily caregiving tasks and to stay in sync with each other. So very quickly on terms of uh, the tools and your thing goes to sleep. I don't know the time. Um, so this is an example. This is Sue, and this is her little micro family. There's her husband, Bill, mother, Mary, um, son, Joey. She's also got her friend, Anka, uh, you know, fitness coach, Yoko. And through the app, all of them can choose to share each other's information as much as they want to give each other permission to do. On the second screen over here, we're looking at um, Sue's list of to-dos, the things that she does to take care of herself. She's relatively healthy, but so she uh, you know, gets reminders to do some calming exercises. Uh, she's part of the QS, so of course she's tracking her coffee habit to see its impact on her headaches. Um, and then the last thing over there is her tasks for today, which includes sort of an exercise routine. She checked in on herself and her weight, but she's also got tasks in there for some of her uh, other people in the family. So she remembers to give Joey his amoxicillin. You know, maybe he had an ear infection. Later in the day, she's going to help Mary with some of her medications and so forth. And Sue is also able to look into Mary's uh, app as well to the extent that Mary has given her permission. And we can see over here that Mary has a much longer list of things that she does. Uh, you know, in this case, she's dealing with hypertension and so forth. So there's you know, quite a list of meds. But then there's all sorts of other things as well. She keeps a, a journal of her dizziness and, um, and so forth. On the middle screen is an example of Mary's list that Sue's also able to see her events for today. And you can see that some of them, like the second one, it says assigned to Bill, a second, third, and fourth. And so Sue can see at a glance what Mary has already taken care of today or what Bill has helped Mary with. She can also look into the future and see what are the things coming up, who's supposed to help her. Before Unfrazzle, uh, Sue spends a lot of time simply stressed out because she has no idea what's going on and she simply imagines the worst. It's the lack of knowing that stresses us out. Here, now, she can know all the time what's going on. The news isn't always pleasant but at least she knows. And the last example uh, I have there is 
you know, admittedly made up. But in this story, um, Mary is keeping track of herself every morning. She just sort of checks in. And she records you know, how she slept, how much she weighs, how she's feeling, and so forth. I only bring that up to make the point. You have another 15 seconds to run. OK. <laughs> uh, is that everything in this app is designed by the user. You know, I certainly don't provide a morning routine uh, template. It's a template that the user fills out with, with scales and words that are completely theirs. So this is what it's about. Uh, Unfrazzle tries to bring some serenity to this chaos. Uh, it's unfrazzlecare.com. Any questions back there? Uh, it up to any notification devices like Pebble or watches? Because I'm just wondering, like, the person would actually have to get used to the smartphone and have some distraction, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, it's, you, you have your, your iPhone or your Android, and it, it works with its notification system. So it reminds you on it. No, I'm just wondering, like, <coughs> a senior patient who may not want to go through these menus, would it be reminders to this? Like, would it sync up the So like, remember that the tool is to help the person doing the tasks. And so if they're doing the tasks, they're more than able to deal with checking boxes. Uh, Today. Thanks for this wonderful presentation. Is this a subscription model, or what is the revenue model on this? So the business model at the moment is we'll figure it out someday. Um, there's, there's 62 million, of, no, 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 it's, it's free, it's free. There's 62 million American adults that are caregivers every year, so if it actually makes a difference, monetization is there. Are you looking at potentially doing some voice recognition um, uh, input into, into the system so that it can ease the use and make it more convenient? Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a very interesting question because I've actually run a, voice recognition company in the past. So I've been at this for a while. This is honestly about version five or so over the last seven years. Version one had voice recognition um, because I built my own device. Then, I had, you know, then the phones got so much better that it made no sense to do that. And so we're just getting to the point where we might be able to do it again. And it turns out in the first case, I actually, um, having known how difficult voice recognition is, I went the cheap solution. I basically had a transcription service because instantaneous voice recognition was not at all important. And it was cheaper and more accurate to do a person in Bangalore than um, worry about the technology. Is there a, um, I might have just a, sort of a dashboard so I know how, at a glance, how things are going? There's, there's, there's not a dashboard in the sense of charts and graphs and so forth. Um, so just so you know, I'm one of the leaders of the quantified self movement, so we're really into all of that stuff. But think of tracking in two very different senses. There's the long-term tracking, which is the kind of thing you're talking about. Can I look at my data? What can I learn from it? There's something I think of as short-term tracking, which is answering the question, oh, did I remember to do that? The stress in daily life is from the lack of knowledge of the short-term tracking. And this is focused on that. Now, all of the data is exportable, so um, people can diagram to their heart's content. 